Welcome to your Baystar Floor Plan 3629-2025 Numar walkthrough. If you come up to the front, we'll walk through starting up at the pilot seat. Our first control on the left-hand side is our equalizer leveling system. Before you put your coach in the leveling mode, either manual or auto, you want to make sure that your slide rooms are already out. And in order to do that, you want to be on air ride suspension. So you want to be completely aired up, then run your rooms out, and then you would be able to come here to the equalizer system touchpad to do your leveling. So you'll have to have the ignition key on to accessories. Once that's on, you'll be able to hit the power button. And you'll be able to see that your ignition is on. Before you auto level, you'll want to make sure that underneath the coach, there's nothing that's off level to the point where there would be a large object. And then you would be able to come in here and then just press the auto level button. You'll be able to hear the jacks going down. You can see the LED here is operating. Independent of the auto level are the manual buttons that you can adjust manually here. Just a note while it's leveling is you can actually get online and you can get the app to see what your coach is doing with leveling and you'll be able to connect to your touchpad with the Bluetooth. You can see the coach is moving as the coach is getting more level. If for some reason you were in an area that was too far off level, that the jacks would not be able to level, you'll see this LED light for excessive slope, and then you would have to move to a different area for leveling to take place. All right, you can see now the LED went out for operating. All of your jacks are down, so now you can turn off your ignition. Your leveling is complete. Then you can power it down. And then your procedure to bring the jacks back up is the same. You would power it up with the ignition on. And then you would just simply hit all retract. So you can see here all the jacks are retracted. If we had started our ignition, we would be on air ride suspension right now, and then we could run all of the slide outs back to the in position. When you're finished, then all you have to do is hit the power button, and that turns the system off. So starting over here at the left-hand side, if we turn our ignition on, we can see that our illumination backlighting on our switches comes on, this is our battery boost. Uh, our battery boost helps us start the engine if the chassis battery is low. All we need to do is press that and hold it down for 60 seconds. And that connects the house batteries to boost the chassis batteries. So then while we're holding that down, we could start the engine if we had an issue with the chassis battery not being able to crank. If we did have low batteries and we weren't plugged in, this is our generator. We'd want to start our generator. So to start the generator, just press forward and hold. And that will start our generator. And once it starts, the flashing will stop. Once we're finished uh, using the generator, we just press the stop here and the light will go out. That means the generator's off. In case you can't hear it, you know that light goes out, it is off. Um, this is our switch for the overhead fans. So um, it's OH fans. So if we go high, the fans above the windshield come on to help circulate air in the front here, or we can go to low. Um, 
we like to have that on, especially when we're defrosting the windshield. In the center position is off. The overhead dome light is here on and off. Just above that, we have our left and right mirror adjust. So our driver mirror is on the left, so we can, once we switch to left, we can adjust it up or down here and left and right here. And then we can adjust the passenger mirror on, on uh, the R. When we're finished, just put the selector in the middle in case you bump it, then it won't move the mirror. If the mirror has frost or moisture on it, all you need to do is uh, turn the mirror heat on and that will melt the frost or that moisture. If, uh, if there's no moisture on it, obviously we'll leave that off. This is your phone charger. You can just set your phone here to charge hands-free. This is our um, emergency hazard. Emergency hazards flashing here. You can see they're on to turn them off. Just press again, they go off. This is our lane keeping system. If we press that, we can see our lane keeping system is on. Uh, it gives you an audible chime if you move out of your lane. So if you want that on, just press it. Um, if you don't, uh, press it again and, and it turns off. Um, you can adjust the sensitivity of how far you move out of the lane. Um, and we'll show you that here in a second. Um, if we move down just below that, we have our traction control system for slippery conditions and our dimmer switch or bright here on the left. You can see the, the dash is dimming uh, this, and the switches, the backlighting is dimming. If we want to go back to brighter, we can just turn it to brighter on the right hand side. And our headlamps and marker lights switch is here. That's off. This is marker lights only. This is headlights on. And all the way to the right is automatic headlights, not automatically dimming headlights, but just the headlights will come on when the level of light uh, gets low enough uh, that you need uh, headlight assist. Or if you have it turned on here and the wipers come on, then your headlights will automatically come on as well. So whether the wipers come on or you turn the wipers on, the headlights will come on at the same time if this is turned over to the right or low light conditions. Just below that, we have an additional charging port, USB-C or USB. To the left of that is a 12 volt charging port. And as I look down here, there's a foot pedal lever here. That's my emergency brake. So if I press that, I'm setting my emergency brake. Just above that, there's a release handle. So I can grab the release handle here and release. Again, press, set, and then release. The hood release is just a little further back. If I want to open the hood, I grab the hood release here and pull, and that will release the hood. To the left, there's a small box, and it is our fuse panel behind it. So if I wanted to check my fuses, remove that box on the back side of it, uh, we've labeled all of our fuses. So for instance, um, if your power visor wasn't working, you would check the fuse in position one. Um, if your steps or mirror weren't working, you'd check fuse F11. So we have extra fuses uh, down there at the bottom of it. So if any of these fuses blow, choose the same size fuse and replace it. And when you're finished, just push, put this back and then uh, the clasp on the top and the bottom. As we move over to the dash here, we can see that uh, it's lit up because we've got the ignition on. Uh, starting at the left, we've got our RPMs. We have our oil pressure, uh, engine temperature, um, miles to empty. This is our fuel gauge. 
uh, battery voltage for the chassis battery. And then in the center of this, uh, the screen, we can scroll left or right here on the wheel, these arrows left. And we can, we can see our first selection is trip, fuel economy, or configure your systems. This is our fuel economy and fuel history. So if I wanted to look at my fuel history, I would just go down and then press the OK button. And that gives me my fuel history. If I want to continue to look at my other settings, I just scroll over vehicle information, maintenance monitor, and settings. Um, here you can see we have a uh, set our settings for pre-collision. Uh, this uh, system has uh, brakes that will assist or come on if you set the pre-collision. You can set the uh, sensitivity and the distance, uh, whether you want active braking or not. You can turn, just by pressing the OK, you can turn on or off the active braking and or the distance indication. Pre-collision, if you don't want it on at all, just press that and then you can choose off if you want to turn your pre-collision off. Uh, it does tell you that it's off in the yellow icon down below. So um, all of this information is contained in the manual that comes with your coach uh, from Ford. And you can review that manual for more detailed information, but that's uh, just a quick overview. On the bottom here, we have our mileage. Uh, this is our shift indicator here in the center. Uh, since we have the key turned on, we have a red indication for our battery because we don't have the engine running. Uh, that goes out when the engine starts. And of course, we have our temperature indication and marker lights uh, showing on. And then we have our speedometer here. To set our cruise control here on the wheel, we can set that right here. Cruise control on and off in our settings up or down. In the center is our horn. On the left side here, this is our turn signal. Left or right. As soon as you go left or right, the camera automatically goes to that view. So if I go right, it shows the right lane because I'm turning right. If I go left, that camera on the left side is going to show. The Wiper wash is right here, so if I press that, the wiper wash will come on and the wipers will cycle three times. But if I want them to stay on, I would just turn this forward and uh, choose a setting here. All right, so uh, our shift, uh, our indicator for our shift is here. If I put the coach in any gear, it's going to show up right here on the bottom in the center. If I want to manually shift the gears, I can do that here, up or down. And when I do that, it will show uh, the, the gears right here, the ones that I've chosen, if I want to do it manually. Um, if I don't, then it'll just automatically shift the gears as normal. If I press the tow haul button, you'll see that the tow haul feature comes on. That just enables the shifting patterns to be better. Uh, for when you're towing. Moving over here to our radio and camera screen, you can select uh, home screen and then you can scroll like this manually or you can just press the arrow to scroll through the channels. So I would maybe want to select cameras here. So that's going to show uh, the rear view camera. If I want to select a different view, down here is my camera selector. So I can go right view, left view, rear view. When I'm done uh, and I want to go back to, let's say, the radio screen, if I just touch the screen, it gives me the icon to go home. So I go back to the home screen.
So you can see this uh, tells me how far I can go over to the right. I've gone all the way over to my selections on the left. Now I can choose radio, Sirius, Android, CarPlay. If I scroll over, I've got USB plug, camera, Bluetooth, audio. If you select, um, let's say for instance, Bluetooth, uh, now you'd be able to connect your device to the radio just by pressing the pair button here. So now it would be pairing with uh, Bluetooth. You'll still have to choose this as your selection on your phone. So you'll uh, choose your radio that shows up and then you'll make your connection with your paired device. Going back to the home screen, you've got your audio visual in. It does have a micro SD. Uh, you can adjust the uh, sound with your equalizer and then there's additional uh, car information here. So if you are tuned into a radio station but you're not getting any volume, even though you've turned up the volume here, you can see we have volume, it's not playing, uh, go to your home screen and make sure zone one is turned on. So press home one, zone one, and then you'll have your volume. If this is off, then you don't have volume. So just remember that when you're turning, tuning your radio in. Uh, these controls down below uh, basically are just the icons that you see, the home screen here. You can uh, flip this up, plug a USB in directly into the radio here. Uh, you can change your band here, your mode button, uh, to go, let's say you wanted Sirius, you can go there. SD card, if you flip this up, you've got your SD card here. To turn the system off, just press the center button and release. Just below that, we have a little storage area here. We have our camera switcher, which you saw earlier. The shade is for the front windshield, up and down. Now, if I press it down, it'll go down as long as the ignition is not on. But you'll see it only goes up. Even though I'm going down, that's because my ignition is on. If I turn my ignition off, then my shade will go down. That's a safety feature in case your, if your engine's running. You don't want the shade uh, to go in any direction except up. So you can see out of the windshield. Just to the right of that, you have your HVAC control just for the cockpit area here. So you've got heating and cooling, which is air conditioning. To turn that on, just turn it on to uh, number one setting, two, three, or four for your fan speeds. And then if you want uh, hot air or cool, uh, that's the center knob. Uh, you will need to press the snowflake um, icon here to get your LED light, the little blue one to come on, that's for your compressor. Otherwise, you won't have uh, air conditioning. And then you can select the recirculate button to get the cooling going faster here in the uh, cockpit area if you like. If you don't select recirculate, you'll get fresh air, a little bit of fresh air coming in from the outside. If you don't turn your snowflake on and you have fresh air coming in you can still get some of the cooling effect if it's a cool day by going over to the cool side and then of course you have your selections for defrost over here on the right or other um, floor or mid here in the knob when you're done using it just turn it off just to the um, just below that we have our table this is a, a folding table. This table folds out. There's a little um, arrow here. If you move this to the left, you can see this table slides. Okay, so once that slides, you can lift and open. You can lift and open this way and then this way. So now I've got a large table here uh, to store it back. We just lift it back up. 
push down and then you'll have to press this again once you once you close it in order for you to push this back forward you'll have to t press that to the side again and then move it forward and it locks in that position so as you're sitting in the passenger seat here you've got an overhead uh, type of light here. It's like a dome light for the passenger side. Below that you've got a 120 volt outlet at the bottom and two USB chargers. Uh, you have a phone charger here and just set it in place and it charges. Storage cup holder and the louvers you can adjust for your air vent for your front heating and cooling. You've got your shades, they're manual, so you can lift. Now you can open and close your window here, just lift up to unlock, and then you can push the window forward. There's a screen here, and then when you're ready to close it, just pull back and lock, and pull the shade back down. And uh, the speakers are above here, and we have more storage in the overhead here. Here we have three compartments above. The seat has a special uh, insert here. You can put your iPad or your phone or whatever here, and you can adjust that here uh, and rotate it. These can both be moved up and down. There are a couple adjustments for the seat. On my right hand side, there's a lever for the seat back. I can adjust that. And then I can rotate the seat as well as there's a footrest here. The footrest switch is right here. So just pull that back and I can set my footrest out here. The seat can be rotated around towards the living room. So to do that, the lever on my right will rotate the seat all the way around. Into the living room area to rotate around. I would just. This is the handle that you have to pull towards you to continue to rotate because it locks in the center position this way. So you just rotate it around. Now you can be facing the living room. When you're ready to travel, just rotate back and it will automatically lock into place. So at the driver's seat, you'll need to adjust uh, forward or back uh, so that you can uh, get close enough to the pedals uh, we have the electric seat on the driver's side, not the manual. And we have the uh, tilt adjust up and down. And we also have the, the seat back, the entire seat moves. So you can, those three are the electric adjustments. You have your armrests up and down. On the left-hand side, I can tilt the seat back. Once I get adjusted, release the lever and it locks into place. So to rotate the seat around to the living room area, there's a lever here on my left side. So I can just release that lever and I'll be able to rotate the seat around. I can step out of it and just rotate the base all the way around. Put the armrest down so we can clear that, and then we can rotate all the way around. When we're finished with the chair towards the living area, ready to uh, put it back for driving, just rotate it back around this way, and it will automatically lock into place. So as you come into the entrance door, just on your right here, uh, you've got your ceiling light switch, uh, which is handy because you can turn your lights on right here when you get in, or your patio light, which is also a light 
in the step wall area. Uh, below that, we have your cargo light switch so you can turn your cargo lights on. And below that, we have your fire extinguisher. With a quick release handle, just flip that to open your fire extinguisher. Just behind the seat belt there, we have our, our uh, LP detector. And that uh, senses any uh, gas in your coach. And if there is, that will give you a warning uh, alert sound. As you come in the entrance door, just above the door is our main control panel. Our main control panel, starting at the left-hand side here, you can see is the bed here, the bed lift. So to operate that is simple, just up and down but you have to have it turned on here. So this is the on and off for the bed lift. So right now, if I wanted to operate the bed, it's off. If I want to turn it on, it's to the right. Now, if I stand clear, I can press the down button and the bed will come down. It automatically will stop In that position, it's uh, set just as it comes to the top of the seats. To go back up, it's the opposite. Just press the button to go up. But in this position, you'll notice it has two latches here for the step-up ladder. So if I get the ladder, I can put these in. And now I can step up into the bed has a 500 pound limit. When I'm finished and I'm ready to move it back up, I move the ladder out of the way and just press the up arrow here. Make sure there's nothing in my way to go up. If the bed does come down too far onto the seat, you can use your seat adjustment to move the seats down on the driver's side. To turn that off so that you don't get uh, any more movement, if someone presses the buttons, just turn the key off. You can actually take the key out if you like. We have this one secured, uh, but that's what the key is for so that you can lock it and uh, and then you can take the key away so nobody can move that. Just below the bed lift, you have your Truma Aqua Go, which is your hot water heater. Um, it's, a, it's a continuous hot water heat. So once you turn it on, you'll have continuous water heat. Uh, it does have a clean feature. Um, just refer to your owner's manual. About once a year, you'll need to put it in the clean function. Uh, to clean out the tank and the, and the system. Just to the right of that, you've got your awning lights. Uh, the awning lights are LED lights uh, that come on on the strip of lights on the tube. Uh, since we're talking about the awning, the awning control is here. We'll get to that in a second. When you first come in the coach, you'll need to turn your battery disconnect on, which is here, uh, before you have to turn this on before you're going to have lighting or other operations in the coach. So this needs to come on. Just press up and the red light tells you that your house batteries are connected to your coach. The step is an override switch for your outside step. So if I turn that switch on, you don't hear anything, but it overrides the door magnets, which tell the steps to go out or go in. Um, by overriding that switch, it makes it or it leaves the steps out in the out position so that when the door closes, the steps stay out. Uh, it just makes it a little easier to get in and out of the coach without the steps moving every time you close and open the door. In the center here, we have our WineGuard TV power booster for channels for over the air TV viewing. So if I wanted to watch television, I would turn it on. 
and it scans for channels. Now we're in a building, so um, we're not going to get any channels other than maybe here we got one. Um, if we need to research uh, for channels, let's say we're outside, we can just press that. Um, in this situation, we're getting an error E3. And uh, if you do get an error on your panel, just refer to your owner's manual for the error that you have. If you have your over the air antenna turned on, you will not be able to watch cable. If you wanted to watch park cable, you have to have your park cable plugged in near the cord reel. And then this needs to be off to watch cable. We'll go over this a little bit more when we turn the TV on. Just below that, we have your off door side slide out and your door side slide out. So your door side is this door for in and out, and the off door side is the driver side slide out. So to move those, you have to press and hold the button in or out, and the slide will move in that direction. Once the slide out gets to the fully extended or fully retract position, it will stop automatically, and then you can release your finger. The awning control is either on or off. Once it's turned on, then I can either extend or retract my patio awning. If this is turned off, the awning will not move. If it's fully extended, it won't move. So I have to have this turned on to retract the awning if it's extended out. There is an additional control. Uh, this is the remote control that you can use outside so that you can watch the awning move, um, but you can use this one as well. Either one work. Uh, this remote control will not work if this is not turned on. So either way, this one has to be on. Our precision power control uh, panel tells us uh, the amperage of service that we're on. You can select or scroll to see uh, what is powered up. It says which ones are powered or meaning on. Below that is your inverter. Your inverter charges your battery and it converts battery power into house power in the kitchen for the GFCI circuits. So you want to make sure that this is enabled and it's turned on. If you press that, um, you, can, uh, you can actually turn it off. If you press and hold. Now it's off. Whoop, I had it off. Let's do that again. Now it's off. All right. So moving into the dinette area, uh, we have the cabinets up on top. In the middle, we have an AV cabinet. That's an audio visual cabinet. So in behind here is where you would put your DVD player or your satellite receiver and you'd plug it in the back. The 120 volt outlets are there along with the uh, satellite connections and your HDMI uh, for both your source and your uh, satellite and your uh, DVD player along with the Bose speaker. Uh, the Bose speaker has its own separate remote. Then there's more cabinet space up here. Uh, the shades on the end windows are manual. Uh, at the end window they have a release lever so you can unlock and you can lift that window up and it has a screen so you can get air in here. When you're finished, just put the window down and lock again and close the blind. The table uh, actually recesses and this makes into a bed. So we'll show you how to do that. The first thing you do is you remove the seat cushion
and there's a, a lever here underneath the table. So you'll have to release that lever. Once that's released, the whole table pushes down. So you can push this table down. Once it sits or seats into uh, position, now we'll put the seat cushions back on. And then there's a third cushion in the bedroom under the bed. We'll grab that. And then now you have your bed. Just the reverse of that to put the table back up. Just lift the table up. Lock into place. And now your table's ready to use again. There's additional storage space um, below. You see a, a small uh, dwell here. Just reach your hand in and pull out towards you and you have extra space for storage here. Uh, when you're finished, just push the drawer back in and this side works the same way. Just grab a hold, pull out. So you have a TV lift here at the dinette. To bring that up, you'll have to go to the control on the wall. You can do it here at the sofa if you'd like. You'll go into the home screen and then you'll see the icon for TV lift there. So press that and then all you need to do is go TV lift up. Once your TV lift is up all the way, you'll be able to take your remote control and if you're going to watch over the air TV, you'll have to go to your menu and scan for channels. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center that gets to this screen and then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings, then press the center button here. And now scroll over. To all settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels. If we scroll down here to broadcasting, then we select that. Press the center button again, and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program. And we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And it'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. Thirty nine channels. So 
we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the WineGuard antenna off if you wanna watch the cable channel. So if you wanna scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and wanna watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program, And this time, we want to, we're plugged in the cable, we've turned our over-the-air uh, wine guard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously, since we are not plugged in the cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. So across from your entrance door and dinette, uh, we have another sofa here that folds out into a bed. So if we want to fold that out into a bed, we just move the pillows and the seat backs are Velcroed on. So just grab a hold of those and pull the Velcro to release. lift up and push down. Now we take our cushions again and they'll go in the back, just flip them over. And we have another bed here. To store it, it's just the opposite. Just lift the cushions out. And lift up push in and our pillows back on. Just above the sofa here we have additional storage space here. We have uh, crank out windows here so if we want to uh, crank our window out, we can do that right here to get fresh air. They're both screened. Uh, this window is also screened. We can unlatch this window and just lift up here. It locks into place. So once we want to bring it down, we have to On the left side, there's a small latch. We just press that over on both sides and then we can bring our window down again. You can hear it unlatch and then come down and then lock. And then we can crank our windows back in here. As we move over into our kitchen, we have our kitchen sink here in the cabinets overhead. We have our Numar information case. This uh, is a case that contains all our information on plumbing, heating, exterior, electrical, and appliances. It includes your owner's manuals for all these products in your coach, as well as the um, warranty registration cards. So go through this information and become familiar with your appliances and the warranties and mail your registration cards in to start your warranty or go online and you can register your appliances online for your warranty.
In addition to the Numar information and your appliances, you have your coach information uh, for the instructions on uh, like the glass dash information, all that's contained in here. This is your owner's manual here, along with uh, additional information on your warranty for your chassis. On the back wall, uh, Numar has um, information on the gross vehicle weight, uh, the serial numbers of the coach, and over on the inside of this door, you've got your color codes uh, of your paint schemes outside, along with QR codes for the country club. Uh, more storage here. Uh, inside this door, you'll see a cord that comes over from the microwave. So uh, to power up your microwave, you just want to turn, plug that in, and then that'll power up your microwave here. Of course, you got your sink here. Uh, these are removable covers. You have a telescoping wand here and sprayer, hot and cold. small drawer and trash receptacle down below. On the underside, you have a GFCI breaker that you can plug into a coffee maker or whatever other appliances you might have in your kitchen area here. You have another window that's crank out uh, with the screen. More drawers, extra router if you chose the option for the um, Starlink. If you chose the Starlink option, you'll get the extra router. Uh, we covered this earlier. This is to hold your iPad if you're in the passenger seat. More drawer space down here. And of course, you've got your Whirlpool microwave here. Numar adds a door latch. This one here is added. Uh, that just makes so that the microwave is more firmly latched when it's closed so when you're in transit the door won't open. You have your bifold cover above your cooktop here so you can just open that and lean it back. This is LP uh, to operate it, you'd want to ignite first here. If you like a little extra light, you can turn this on first, but your ignition would be here to start, and then you would turn on here to light, and then you would set your heat setting here. To turn off, uh, of course, that's just all up is off. Make sure this is cooled down before you close the cover. And then you can turn your backlighting off here. We have more drawer space down below. When you get your coach new, your, <clears throat> your remotes for your Bose, your television, your t other TV, they're all in here. Your awning remote control, uh, touch-up paint, and flag pole holder, along with the filter wrench. Uh, we'll show you where this is used outside in a little bit. And more drawer space. Moving over to the refrigerator, you have a triple door stainless steel nor cold refrigerator. To open the doors, you just grab a hold here and open. Your adjustments for the temperature and on and off are all here on the front. So to turn your refrigerator on or off, this is the button you would turn it on. And then to select the freezer, this button, you would press the freezer and then you can adjust the settings here. So now I can adjust my settings in the freezer. If I want to adjust the refrigerator, I would press that one. I can go up or down on the 
levels of cooling. The higher the setting, the colder the setting would be. So to adjust the brightness of the LEDs here in the door handles and in the bottom freezer door, uh, you can press this and you can adjust this up or down for the bright or dimming of those blue lights. Inside the freezer, you've got a tray here for the ice maker. The ice maker has a bail arm. You can see here, to turn the ice on, the bail arm has to be down. So this bail arm here has to be down in order for it to make ice. If you, if you have enough ice, you don't want to make any more, lift the bail arm up. So next to our refrigerator is our pantry and shelves. So at the control that you're looking at is for the fantastic vent, the fan that will pull air out of your coach here in the kitchen or the half bath or the full bath. To turn it on and off, the fan button is up on the top. But if you just wanted to open the lid and let the air go out uh, just by itself, you can open the lid here and that will lift the lid and then the air will just gradually move out of your coach. To turn a fan speed on, then you would have to press the up and down arrows here after you turn the fan on. So now the lid's open. I can set my speed of the fan here. You can hear that going down lower. If for any reason the lid won't open, fan won't come on, there is a rain sensor on the outside. If that is has a little moisture on it, the fan won't operate and the lid won't work, won't open. You can override that by pressing and holding down the down button until you see that red light come on. That means you have overridden the rain sensor. You might have to do that in the full bath if you're taking a hot shower a lot of moisture in the air and uh, it can trip the rain sensor to not open. If you want to turn the rain sensor override off, just press the same button three seconds and now the rain sensor would be activated again. So this is our fan speed here. Uh, this is just the lid up and down. To have the fan speed working, you have to press the blue button on top. To close it, all we have to do is turn it off with the blue button. The lid and the fan will shut off and the lid closes. There is a fuse on the inside that you can check if the fan won't come on and you don't get anything on the display. Just turn this and remove and you have your fuse there that has to be good for it to power up. Now you can see with the fuse out, I don't see a red glow here at the fan. If I put this back in, you'll see a small red LED light that comes on right there at the edge of the fan. That means that I have power to my fan. So that fuse is good if you see that red LED light. Just in case you don't have a fuse and you wanted to open this, you can still open it manually with this crank right here. And our fan will come on as long as our fuse is working. To close it, just turn clockwise and it turns the fan off. You can do that with all three fans. Here in the hallway, right beside your kitchen, you have your touch panel. Uh, this 10 inch screen is very similar to the screen that's on the wall at the sofa or in the bathrooms. And you can see the icons that are available here at the bottom. And as soon as you select one of those icons, it goes to that function or that feature. So if I would select tanks, that's going to display my tanks. Fresh, gray, black, and LP. It also shows water pump and my lights, my lighting control. I can uh, turn my lights on and off from here. If I go and select my AGS, I can do my setup for when I want my AGS to come on. 
or when I want it to stay quiet and not turn on. If I go to my HVAC screen, I can see that I can turn on my heating and ventilation and my air conditioning in the living room or the bedroom. When I touch any one of these settings, it turns from gray to red. That means it's on. So if I want to have my heating or cooling system on, I have to press that on off button and make it red, and then I can control the mode. So currently it's in the off mode. So if I would press it again, now it's in the air conditioning or cool mode. Auto mode means it selects furnace or air conditioning for you. All you have to do is set temperature. Heat pump is the rooftop air conditioner heat pump and furnace is your LP furnace. And since the furnace, we had that on for a second, you saw the flame come on and the furnace was going to give us heat. When we are in the air conditioning mode, whether cool or heat pump, we can leave the fan in auto or we can set the fan on low. If you set the fan on low, it's gonna to continue to run. You can hear uh, the fan just came on. So. If I want the fan to cycle with the air conditioner, then I just leave it in auto, then the fan comes on with the air conditioner or the heat pump. If I go to my setup screen, I'm in my settings for um, enabling programming, HVAC temperatures. I can set uh, my time, for instance, if I need to change my clock to a different time zone, or the, the, the time was wrong. If you hit the back arrow, you can go back to settings here. I can set it uh, programming uh, or weekly. Going to the Bluetooth pair, if I get this app called Connected Solutions on my phone, then I can connect my phone Bluetooth with pushing that button here. It's now in pairing. So this is flashing blue, and I would look at my phone, and then it would be pairing with this app. When it pairs with the app and this touchpad control, it's going to be on Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is going to enable you to look at any one of these settings, and you'll see this on your phone. So you'll be able to control all of these functions on your phone just like you would if you were on the touch panel here. Now there, there is a range around the coach and inside the coach and it depends on the Wi-Fi strength, uh, the Wi-Fi signal, and for pairing it, it, uh, it relies on the Bluetooth. So refer to your owner's manual for more information on that. The lighting control is for all of the areas in the coach, stool room, bedroom, bath, kitchen. So if I press the kitchen, I can turn the lights on or off in the kitchen. Overhead lights. And the living room all off, all on here. So again, you can scroll through and you have control over all these functions that you see the icons for here at the bottom of the screen. So we're at the half bath here. The half bath and this pocket door at the half bath is the same as the sliding door in the bedroom and the sliding door in the full bath at the rear of the coach. They all unlock the same. So just if you look here, it says push down to unlock. So right now the door is locked in the closed position. To unlock, just push down and open. And you want to leave your door locked in this position to travel. You don't want it locked in the closed position. As we move into the bathroom, you'll see that we have two large cabinets up in the top here above the window. This is your electric control uh, center. Uh, this is the 120 volt and the 12 volt uh, supplies where they meet and where their circuits are, are uh, regulated. Uh, the 120 volt main here has to be turned on for your 120 volt appliances to work. So the main has to be on and then these 
are all labeled uh, what they control, dryer, washer, um, air conditioners and inverters. If you see one in this position where it's facing out, that means it's tripped. So our heat pads have tripped. If we want to turn those back on, if they trip the uh, breaker, we have to go to the right to reset it. Sometimes when they're tripped, they're only tripped about halfway. So it'll look something like that. If you see one like that, you have to have it all the way off and then back on to reset it to make it operate. So these are your 120 volt supplies. Over here, this, these are supplied from the inverter. <clears throat> this is called the sub panel for the inverter. So the inverter takes the battery power and changes it into 120 volt and operates your refrigerator, your basement, microwave, kitchen, and living room. And this is the main that has to be on for these to work. So right now our bed, bath, basement one is off. If we want that on, we'd have to flip that up to make sure it's going to operate. So over on our right, we have our uh, fuses for our 12 volt appliances. Those fuses are all labeled. So all of our fuses here have a number and the number of the fuse is on the label that Numar provides in your coach. Uh, let's say for instance, your power awning wasn't working, that's labeled F6. So then we'd go to F6, pull the F6 fuse out, which is right here and check it. If we needed to replace it, get a fuse that's exactly the same size and put it back into F6. And then we'd have our awning working again. Just to the left hand side, we have our Wi Fi router. Our Wi Fi router has an LED light here at the bottom that tells it's, it's working, it's powered up, it's on. Uh, we have our Starlink. Uh, or our Starlink control receiver here. Uh, it's not currently plugged in. So above the Starlink, we have our satellite prep. So if we wanted to run satellite, we'd remove this and we would have a pull wire here to uh, uh, run our satellite wiring. So we have uh, our cabinets on the back wall. At the top is a large storage area. In the middle one, we have uh, additional shelves for storage. And at the very bottom, the louvers are just a return air for our uh, furnace, for our LP furnace. Uh, we have our fantastic vent, which is right above us. Uh, this control works just like the one we showed you in the kitchen. Uh, we have our ceiling lights on and off, vanity lights, water pump, the backlighting for the switch to dim the switch, and our high and low for the lighting. We have our window. Uh, this is uh, similar to the other ones in the coach. Crank out screen for fresh air. Our Dometic toilet. The Dometic toilet flush is right there near the floor. So to flush this toilet, we just press down here to flush. On the right hand side, out, outer wall is another 120 volt uh, GFCI protected circuit. Uh, drawers here. More cabinet space below the sink. Our water lines are uh, indicated red for hot and the blue line is cold. Above the sink we have our medicine cabinet and lighting. So as we move into the bedroom we have another pocket door here. It unlocks and locks the same and the travel's the same. Once it moves over here, it locks. To unlock, we just slide it back in. 
and it's locked in place. Just beside the half bath, we have two double doors for our washer and dryer. Washer, uh, our dryer is at the top. Our dryer settings for heat are here and cycle time. Uh, below we have our washing machine uh, and of course uh, our settings and our display screen. There is a notice here that you want to remove the outside drain cap before operating the washing machine. Uh, what, what that means is that the gray tank which holds the wastewater that comes out of your washing machine is going to start to fill up that gray tank and unless you take the cap off, uh, open the gate valve, take the cap off the sewer drain uh, so the water can drain out of that gray tank, it may fill up. And if your gray tank fills up, uh, it's going to start to come above the gray tank level and it's going to go into your shower. And we don't want you to have that, so just make sure that you open your gate valve for the gray tank and have that hooked to the sewer and that the cap is open so the water can drain out. In the back, we have the hot and cold water shutoffs for the washer if you need to turn your water off, as well as the plugs uh, for both the dryer and the washing machine. So as we move into the bedroom, uh, we'll see we've got a sensor on the wall here. This is for the rear zone of the coach for the heating and cooling HVAC system. Uh, for temperature sensing. Uh, in the middle of the ceiling, we have our CO2 detector. The CO2 detector um, should be tested just like the smoke detector. You press in the center and hold it until you hear the alarm and you see the LED light uh, flash. That tells you your battery's good and that you would get a warning if there was CO2 in the room. If you don't hear the sound or see the LED light, just grab a hold of the sides, squeeze it a little bit, and pull down and change the battery, the 9 volt battery. Once you change that, put this back up and retest. Make sure it operates in sound and LED light um, for your CO2 protection. At the nightstand, we've got 120 volt a plug here with two USB chargers with more storage below the nightstand. In the back, we've got more storage, 120 volt outlet in the back with an access port in case you have a CPAP machine or you want to drop some other uh, lines through here uh, down below. You could put your machine up here or your other devices and plug them in there. We have a side window here uh, at the ends of the slide, it has a slider window. Just lift up and you can pull that window open for fresh air. There's a screen here. Close and lock. We have the same on the other side. The storage on the overhead and nightstand along with the 120 volt outlet with USB plugs to charge. Underneath the bed is a storage area. The bed lifts up. You have your ladder for your front bed in the driver's area along with more storage here. The reason these holes are here is that these can be lifted up if you remove the screws to service underneath the bed. To close, just push down. One thing that we should probably mention, you'll notice that one of these grills has filters and the other one doesn't. So the air that's coming out has already been filtered because the air goes in here, goes through the air conditioner or heat pump, comes out here hot or cold. But this filter can be removed and cleaned and it should be. The more that you use your coach, uh, the more these will collect dust so these need to be removed and washed in warm soapy water and then rinsed and then you can let them air dry and then put them back in place 
and just clip them back up. And they they are in the coach all the way uh, front to rear um, on the passenger side. So when you put these back, if you happen to, to remove both, remember that they go in the side that's on the passenger side, not the driver's side. The driver's side are clear because that's the exit air. So on the opposite side of the bed, you have the control for your slide out uh, with instructions and warnings. You have an in or out and you have to press the button to make it go in. Now you can hear it moving, release and it stops. So if I'm going, let's say all the way to the out position, you wanna press and hold it until the room stops. So press and hold, you'll hear the room stop and then you release. The same, same with go going in or retracting, just hold that button down until it's fully retracted and it will stop automatically and then release the button. There's a television here in the cabinet where you would connect your receivers to this television or right down below in the glass front cabinet here. You've got your satellite connections, HDMI, and 120 volt outlets so you can put your receivers in here and plug them in for that television. You've got your drawers here for storage. And you've got a wardrobe closet up here to hang your clothes along with a 120 volt outlet for the television. There is a decal eight and a half by 11 on the end wall in this cabinet with all the model and serial numbers of your appliances in this coach. So if you ever need to change one of your appliances and you don't know what the model and serial number is, it's listed here. And more drawer space below. The floor heat vent louvers are right down below. That's for your furnace hot air to come out. So I've entered the rear bathroom. The pocket door operates the same as the bathroom door or the bedroom. Just unlock and then relatch to travel. This is in your travel position. The shower has a lock for its door as well. So to unlock the doors to close after you've entered the shower, just unlock here and then close here. The shower operates just pull towards you to turn it on. Left and right is hot and cold. And of course you can, uh, you can either have the overhead or the hand wand on. Um, that adjustment is at the top. To close the door and lock in place, just close and push this lever down until it clips. We have a skylight above the shower. Louvers here. This has a filter that needs to be cleaned like we just talked about. We have our medicine cabinet here along with a 120 volt outlet just below. We have our hot and cold on and off. Below our sink, we have more storage here and our drawers. There is a heating vent here where you'll get warm air out from your furnace. A large cabinet here with our lighting controls uh, for the entire coach. More storage in this compartment below. The chain keeps it from touching. So just behind the toilet, there's an emergency exit door. The exit door is locked with a deadbolt and a lock for the handle. So in case of an emergency, you need to get out of your coach here at the back of the uh, coach, you can get out, unlock the deadbolt first, 
and then the door handle here and then just reach the in here the door handle and push here to open and there's a ladder built in side of this panel so we just remove the panel and the ladder has a velcro strap then we just grab a hold of the ladder it telescopes out and drops into position and then he can just step out on the ladder to get out of the coach. If you're just testing it like we are here, you can just store it. It telescopes back in place like this. You lift the bottom up and then put your Velcro back here. and then close the door. After you've closed the door, uh, it shows on the deadbolt, unlock and lock. So just lock your deadbolt. And in addition to that, you can lock the door handle here. And our shade is just a manual sun shade and night shade. We are at the front of your base star. We're just gonna cover some of the things that you see here. Uh, at the very top, you've got your marker lights, uh, your bright and dim turn signal, and more marker lights here. There are LEDs. You've got your lane keeper here. Your lane keeper gives you those lane warnings uh, as a tone that you can adjust. Underneath the hood, you've got a prop rod. So you grab that prop rod. And underneath the hood, we can see our uh, washer fluid for our wipers, our fill here. This is for our jacks. Uh, the jacks have a dipstick here, so we can turn this open. We can check our level. Uh, this would be the low, that would be the high. Those are our equalizer jacks. Uh, we have our power steering fluid and dipstick here. You can check the level for that. This is our air filter. Uh, to remove the air filter, we just unclip it here and change the air filter here. Moving over here, we've got your oil dipstick here and fill. We have our engine coolant here and cap to fill here. Have our chassis battery and additional house batteries here. There's a light here that you can turn on, uh, manual on off. On the far left hand side is your HVAC system for heating and cooling in the cockpit area. To close the hood, just lift up here and put the prop rod back in its clip. Then you can just drop the hood down. Uh, in the lower center area here, this is for your uh, collision uh, mitigation system. Uh, you wanna keep this uh, clear of debris and clean. If this is ice or snow covered, you'll want to be uh, remove that uh, so that the uh, lane warnings will uh, be working. If, if it's covered with snow and ice, uh, you won't get the warnings. So at the front corner of your coach, you have a flag post connector here. Just insert. Now you can put your flagpole in here. Just above that, you've got your mirror. The mirror can be adjusted uh, by loosening these screws. There's three of them. And then you can tilt or turn your mirror and then retighten. This is for when you open the door, you can latch the door here so it doesn't continuously move. I'll show you how to do that. You've got this lever here. You just open that, and then you can just latch that here and push down. 
to lock your door in place. To unlock, just do the reverse, lift up, pull, and push. Now you notice the door went into the first latch. It didn't actually close all the way. There's two latches in uh, every door. So to get it to go in the second latch, you'll have to close it more firmly. The, the first latch is okay if you just are going in and out of the coach and just want to close the door. But if you want to travel, it has to be in the second latch. So you have to close it more firmly like that. Now it's closed into the second latch. <clears throat> to lock and unlock the door is the purple key here. So you can lock and unlock the door handle here or the deadbolt here. So if we go into the top one, you can see that's my deadbolt lock and unlock. And my door is down here at the bottom. So if I wanna look at that one, So now, if I turn this, you can see that's going to lock and unlock my door. So that's the way you use the key to do it. Obviously, if you're inside, you can do it manually here. And that's unlock and lock. So that's unlock is down. The, sc the screen has a lock here. You can see how that goes up and latches on the back side. So that's unlock and that's lock. And then this has a magnet here, which catches on the entrance door so they can both close together if you'd like to do it that way. Uh, in addition to this being a screen door, it has a shade here, so if we wanna have the shade down. Uh, there is a screen here, but if you want the light to be blocked out, open or close, just slide it up. We talked about the steps. The step override switch is on because typically when you close the door, the steps would go in. So if I close the door right now, the steps are staying out. So the step override switch is on. If you want the steps to move with the door, you need to Flip the switch in the opposite direction in the overhead. Find the step switch. Turn it in the opposite direction. Now the steps will close. Just above the door, you've got your patio light and your awning. Your awning uh, has a remote. So as long as the awning is turned on in the overhead, I can open and close the awning here. So RET is retract, EXT is extend. I'll turn that switch on. It's on right now. So I hit extend. Just one time, you hit extend. So we hit extend. Once the awning is all the way out, the awning is run all the way out. Uh, you could turn on the exterior LEDs. Uh, here you can see there's a LED switch for the lights. We can turn the LED lights on and off. When we're finished with the awning, we can just hit RET, which is retract. The awning has a feature which has a shake sensor. So when it's extended, if there's wind and it moves uh, too much, it will automatically close. Moving just behind our entrance door and our first baggage door back, uh, we have our Xantrex inverter. Uh, we have our wrench uh, for our lugs 
um, on our wheels and storage compartment area and more storage in our next compartment with a manual light on and off. Another light in this door. You'll see there is a blue line there. That is the uh, water line. Uh, and there's a drain. We'll get. We'll show you that in a second. That's your fresh water tank uh, with the handle. You can drain that tank. Uh, let's say you're draining it to winterize it. You would just open the handle, and the water would drain out of the fresh water tank here. We have another light manual, and our slide room controls are there with a marker light right above the door. So when you turn on your marker lights, that will illuminate. We have our furnace here, Suburban LP gas furnace. Uh, there is a small label here, it says hot. Just remember if you're running your furnace, that will get extremely hot. So you don't wanna to touch that when you're on the outside of your coach. And you wanna make sure this one, which is air going in for combustion, is clear. If there's anything blocking this, your furnace won't operate properly. In our next compartment back, you've got, you've got an additional light here on the front wall here. You've got your connections for your satellite and DVD Blu-ray player, as well as a cable that you could plug into here um, and or a uh, TV if you wanted to have outside entertainment center. <clears throat> so your tank heat, uh, once you plug it in here, you'll still need to enable it on the uh, screen uh, inside in the hallway, your 10 inch screen. You'll have to enable your tanks and it has to have a minimum of five gallons in the bottom of the tank for the pads to come on. Just behind our wheel well, we have another storage compartment. If you look straight underneath, you'll see our leveling jack. That should be checked uh, before you travel just to make sure it fully retracted. This has another uh, manual light inside. our next compartment back we have our Cummins generator. So your, your generator has an access panel here. It operates on uh, the fuel that's in your uh, tank when you fill up. This is your service panel. Uh, you can start it from the outside manually right here, making sure that your breakers are turned on. If they're flipped to the right, they're off. These have to be turned on when it's running to have power coming in the inside of the coach. To start it, just press and hold. And push down to stop. Here's your oil fill level. You can check your oil right here and fill in the same spot. Okay, so in the next compartment back is your water heater. This is the Truma Aqua Go. There's an access here at the top. You can flip this panel down and it has straps that hold it. Um, you have your pop-off valve. If it uh, gets too warm, uh, that'll pop off. Um, the winterizing uh, instructions are here. You can open this to drain the tank. Uh, to, when the tank is in use, it, it has this filtration that goes in here. And that would be for when you're using that. You'd want that filter in there. Uh, it also 
is uh, the way that you would put the pellets in here to clean the system, but you'll have to refer to your owner's manual for that. This is just being stored here for, for now. It, the tank is fully drained. In the event that the overhead control wouldn't turn this on, you can actually turn it on manually right here. Uh, on the back side of this tank is the bypass valve. So when you winterize it, you can set your bypass valve here. Uh, the instructions for adjusting the bypass are right there on the hose. There is a light inside here. You can turn on and off manually. So we're at the rear of the coach. Uh, looking at the top, you've got your marker lights, uh, your brake light in the center, brake, brake light and turn signal, reflectors, uh, the tailpipe for your generator. You've got your tow plug there on the left and your camera uh, in the top center for the rear view camera. At the rear corner of the cap, our first door back, we have our connections here uh, for our shore cord uh, with just a warning here, don't exceed the circuit rating. The shore cord is manual, just pull it out. Insert here so you can close the door. After you're plugged in, you'll have the power going through this transfer switch. So this transfer switch automatically uh, connects to either the shore cord or the generator. If your generator's running, it's gonna connect to the generator as a priority. This is an automatic transfer switch. It will automatically uh, make that uh, selection for you if you're plugged in. Just uh, to the top of that is your park cable connection. So if you wanna watch park cable, you'd run that cable up through here and plug in. If you're not using it, you can just put the cap over it there. This is the drain for your black tank. This is the gate valve to open the black tank and close it. This is the cap that you have to remove to connect the hose on that goes to your sewer. This is the sensor that measures the amount of or the level of the effluent in the black tank. In our next compartment forward is more storage and exterior light. Fuel fill, gasoline, storage compartment for your sewer hose, more storage area here with manual light. Exhaust for the engine. In our next compartment forward, we have our water bay compartment. That water bay extends a little bit over into the other two doors here, so we'll open those as we talk about it. We'll move that way and look at uh, how to uh, control these uh, systems for your water. The water tanks are protected by the heating pads in cold weather. So this is our, uh, our shower here at the end. So to connect to our fresh water so we can have water in the coach or fill the fresh water tank, we have our fresh water city connection. It's just a hose connection so we can connect our hose here and turn this to tighten the hose so we don't have any leaks. Once we have our water connection made that's less than 60 PSI, we can turn that water supply on. Once we have our water connected, we have a supply to fill the freshwater tank, we just turn that on and that will fill the tank. Once the tank is full, um, we can turn that off and then the water that's going in here supplies into the coach. So 
we want to make sure that this is turned off if we turn our water pump on because if this is left on it won't pump water out of the fresh tank so this needs to be off then we could turn on our water pump and we could draw water out of our fresh tank if we needed but as long as our city connection is there uh, and we have water pressure coming in, we won't need to run or turn our water pump on. When we're done with that, we can close if we've filled our tank and we can, we can uh, disconnect from that. This, these two connections here, if we wanted to take our hose, we could rinse the black tank or uh, Oh, I see there's two black tanks. We can either rinse the sewage tank in the front or the rear. We'll show you that in a minute. This is the filter that goes in this canister. So when you get your coach new, you'll want to loosen this up, insert the filter, and then retighten it with the wrench that's inside that comes with the coach. Now we'll move over to the other compartment. Drain. So to empty the forward uh, black tank, which is your sewage tank, or your gray tank, which is your wastewater tank, this is where you would need to connect your sewer hose and then run your sewer hose through the base here uh, to the sewer drain. And then to empty those tanks, we just pull these valves towards you. So this would be the sewage valve for the black tank, and this would be the wastewater tank for the gray. When you're uh, empty, you can push these back in to close and then put your cap back on the drain. Once you've removed your sewer hose, you can put your cap back here. And close your door. Light. In our next compartment forward, we have our winterizing hose. This needs to be connected to your potable winterizing solution if you're gonna winterize your coach. Uh, your low point drains will need to be opened. Your low point drains are in the first compartment. Once you empty the water out of your hot and cold and fresh water low point drain that we looked at earlier, after all the water is drained out, then you would close the drains, insert this into the potable antifreeze, reverse these two valves, and then turn the water pump on. That pulls the antifreeze into the system, and you would go inside and open up your uh, water faucets, flush your toilet, turn on your appliances so that all of your appliances and lines are filled with the antifreeze solution so they don't freeze. Once that's done, you can remove this hose, turn off the water pump, cap the line, and reverse these two valves. If at any time the, the uh, water pump isn't pulling enough antifreeze in or you're operating your coach and you're using the pump for fresh water out of your fresh water tank and it's not giving you enough water or it seems to be intermittent, there is a small screen here on the end of the pump that you can take out, clean the screen and put it back. Twist it back on until the O-ring is sealed tight and that will give you your best flow of water. Just to the rear of that, you have your uh, dual motor slide, slide out control. Above that, you've got your fresh water tank, more storage, and your on off for your light. In our next compartment forward, we have our lift pump for all the gray water that's coming out of the kitchen. It gets pumped in here. And then as long as we have a 120 volt supply, this pump will pump it into the gray tank. 
We have our battery compartment tray. This one can be opened and the batteries can be serviced by removing these two rods and then the tray pulls out. These are lead acid batteries, so you can remove the caps here, lift them up and check the fluid level. The fluid level uh, can be filled with distilled water and they should be filled so that the level of uh, fluid is above the plates. When you're done servicing, you can close and relock with the pins here and here. And our most forward compartment on the driver's side is the LP tank. The LP tank has a gauge that tells you how full it is, as well as on the inside on the panels. This is your fill. This is the on off valve. So if you ever smell LP, you want to come out here and rotate this clockwise to turn off the LP. Whether you smell it inside or outside, uh, always come and close this valve off. This valve is always open if you're going to run any of your LP appliances. If you're going to store your coach, we, we recommend that you close it, which is clockwise. So before we run a slide out extension or re retraction, we want to make sure there's nothing in the way of the room before it closes. Uh, above the uh, top of the room, in between the slide topper fabric or the roof, we also want to make sure that when we extend it, this gap or this reveal is about 3 8 of an inch. If it's touching uh, on the Z trim, so if this trim is touching this trim, um, we want to get into more of a level position with the coach before we run the slide out into the extension um, position. 